So the August real estate numbers are in. Uh, Riyad and Will here from the DR group. And today we have uh, Sadiq Boudou. Did I say it correct there, Sadiq? <laughs> I don't care what you call me as long as you call me. All right. For approved financial services here in the Durham region. Thank you for joining us again this month there, Sadiq. And My I guess we will start with the GTA numbers. Well, the average overall. The average. Yep, yep. So let me get to that right now. So total transactions, year over year, we're down 34.2%. August 2021, we had about 8,500 transactions, and we're down to about 5,600 transactions. Month over month, though, we're up slightly 11%. So in July, we had 5,200 transactions, and in August, we had about 5,800 transactions. Average selling price, year over year, we're up 0.9%. So August of last year, a million seventy. August of this year, 1,079,000. And then month over month, we're up 2.1% from 1,107,000 to 1,130,000. And then total new listings, we're down year over year about 0.7%. So last year, August, 10,600. And then this year, August, 10,500. Will, what are we seeing out in uh, Durham? Durham region sales were up 15% versus July, 2022. Listings were down 13% versus July 2022. Uh, number of days on market remained the same at about 15 days. Uh, the average price is down slightly to 920. Uh, let's say 920, 200. And they're not expecting the average price to fall any further in the region. Um, and that's due to, they're saying, because of population growth. Durham's up about 8% in population growth in the last you know, five years. Uh, but the big thing is that there is going to be an, an increased demand. If you see all the construction in the, in the region right now, increased demand for housing. Yeah. And they can't keep up with, with the demand. Uh, so they're not expecting pricing to drop any further. As I said in previous videos, I believe prices will uptick a little bit towards the end of this year. Um, because, you know, demand is going to uh, pick up again and remain very strong indefinitely, I feel. Yeah. So Sadiq, how's it going year end? Um, I, well, we're recording this video after the you know the rate hike, obviously in September. So what did August look like, and then what do you think is going to happen after this increase, or what are you seeing after this increase? Well, August in the in the mortgage world was pretty much as expected, right? Like with with looming back to school and stuff like that, we we, we traditionally and it's always been the case for as long as I've been in the, in the in the business where everything slows down. Right, everybody starts focusing on back to school, um, buying activity, um, interest in 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 mortgages is not um, predominant. And that's why you'll you, that's why the lenders usually take their vacation at that time. More, more underwriters are off in that time of uh, the year than any other time because it's a slower period naturally. Um, with that that looming um, rating uh, increase, which ended up happening, right, and now we're up to to uh, three and a quarter percent um, on, uh, on the overnight lending rate. You know. It, Again, it's 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 news, but it's non-news, right? Everybody expected this. Um, you know, it's not a coincidence that all the economic forecasters and the, the, the economic gurus out there were, were predicting this because they're the same guys giving the government the advice to do this. So it's kind of not really a prediction when you're the guy saying, hey, do this, and the government's saying, oh, that sounds like a good idea. So it was pretty much a definite that we were going to get that rate hike and at the, the 75 basis points that it was. Um, what was it, the interesting part, part about it is that everybody was saying that, well, this would be the last one, and the government's going to kind of sit still there. And the Bank of Canada actually kind of indicated that, hey, this most likely won't be the last one. Right, um, which was kind of a surprise to, to everybody out there. Um, it wasn't the thing that everyone was talking about. Obviously, everybody's talking about the rate hike itself, but the reality is, is this may not be the last one. Um, as, as again, I'll go on record saying, as ill advised as it was in the first place, and the last few of them were. I think the government's still going to go ahead because what we saw is, you know, our um, the inflation rate you know, the core inflation rate going from 5% to 5.5%, but the uh, CPI inflation actually went from 8.1 down to 7.6. But the Bank of Canada is treating this as a domestic issue, right? And saying that this, this inflation is domestic. In reality, it's not because we have places like Australia, the US, the UK, all looking at raising their rates, which means their inflation is also going up. So whereas the Bank of Canada is treating this as a domestic issue, this is a global issue because it's a global supply challenge 
which is again an artificial factor. So like Will said, like I think reality is is that we will have that higher demand. That the higher demand hasn't gone away. It's just kind of taking a little bit of a nap right now and it's going to come back stronger. We're going to have where the, the prices are going to start going back up again. If you guys noticed, like I didn't post anything about the rate hike. Okay. I don't ever, you know why? It's a non-factor. If you want to buy a house, if you need a house to live in, right? What, who cares what the rate is? You need a roof over your head. So it's either you get, get in the market or you go and rent from somebody else who's going to get in the market and buy and rent it out to you, right? Simple logic. So rates being what they are, it is what it is. It doesn't change the direction that you need to take to meet that basic need of shelter, right? So it's a, to me, it's a non-issue. Just people need to just sit back and say, look, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to pay a little bit more, but guess what? If I wait, the prices are going to start going up again. I'm going to pay a lot more. Yep. And, and even oh. rental prices have, have soared too. So like if you go into the rental market, you're paying, you know, high rates right there, right? So you're actually better in yep. going to getting a mortgage and paying it down. Even though you're paying a little bit more, you're still paying down your mortgage. Yeah, you're getting the equity gain, right? You're, yeah. you're the one benefiting. You're going to grow your net worth as opposed to somebody else's. Correct, yeah. Right, so what, so what are you, so I guess the market's not going to crash to uh, people's, you know, people were saying because the whole rate increase, the market was going to crash and people will have to, you know, sell their homes. So what would you say to a first-time buyer now Higher rates, pricing is down about 20-ish percent. Is now a good time for them to buy? So when it comes to buying a property, there's two great times to buy it. 10 years ago and today. <laughs> right? All right. <laughs> so if you didn't jump on the first one, jump on the second one, right? Because right. reality is, is, and I just had this conversation with them, some past clients actually on Saturday. They're actually some good friends. They came over, sorry, Sunday. Um, and the reality is, is that if you, if you stop thinking of your house first as an investment and still think of, and think of it primary as your shelter, as your safe haven, right? As fulfilling your basic need. It doesn't matter if you jumped in the, the, the market 10 years ago. It doesn't matter if you jumped in the market 60 days ago, or you're jumping into the market today because you're fulfilling a primary need. Any valuation increase and equity growth in your property, that's the bonus, okay? So that's, yes, everybody wants that, but that's the bonus. What you're doing, as, and to Riyadh's point, instead of throwing money away at these ridiculously high rental prices you're putting it into something for yourself and fulfilling that same basic need the difference is is when you buy that property now that same basic need also has an upside potential of giving you equity and profit down the road so if you're if you're a first time buyer if you're somebody who owns a home and is thinking about up, upgrading or you know get, getting into something bigger something to fit your your family's needs Literally, don't procrastinate. Don't wait for the market to change. Don't wait for things. Don't try and time the market because real, reality is, is everything's relative. If you buy in a, if you if you sell in a high market, you're going to buy in a high market. If you buy, buy you, you sell in a low market, you're going to buy back in a low market. You're going to it's going to average out. But okay. what's going to the, the thing that not going to work in your best interest is the property that you you like, the one that's the right fit for you, is not going to wait indefinitely on that market for you. So the longer you take to jump in there, the less chances are you're going to find that ideal property. No, for sure. Makes a lot of sense. Now for investors, maybe they're looking at investing and we're probably holding off to see the market crash where you get a home for a dollar. That's not going to happen. What kind of advice are you giving to people that are looking to invest in real estate? I will also say, you know, pre-construction as well. So I think that's taken a bit of a hit in the last few months. Yeah. So pre pre construction is always a little bit of a gamble, right? Because if you look at the the price per square foot that a builder is selling a pre construction, it's typically priced higher than the current price per square foot of the equivalent home within a one to five year age bracket, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and that's because the builders they've got their they they they're pretty smart and they're also forecasting out what's going to happen in, in the market. In, by the time their construction is finished and their pricing for where the market will be, okay? And that's actually a good indication for the retail uh, or the resale uh, real estate market because of the fact that if the builders are forecasting, okay, hey, th this 
you know, single car garage, detached home, or this, uh, you know, single car garage, semi home is going to be worth this in the future. And that's where they're pricing it. That indicates where the resale market should end up, give or take in that in that many years, right? So when you're going into that, that, that new construction, you got to keep in mind that the bill is already priced into that. Gone are the days where you're going to buy a property in phase one and sell it in phase three and take advantage of the, uh, the builder, you know, um, uh, inflating the price and then you're going to get that equity growth. So it's, you've got to look at it as, okay, if I'm going to do that, it's more of a buy and hold strategy for that property, right? If you're looking to get into the, the rental market, what I would recommend is, again, we'll take advantage of, we talked about this before, the, the multifamily, um, the multi-generational aspect, right? Look for properties that have multiple units, right? Multiple sources of revenue, because what you'll also be able to do is you'll probably be able to rent that out a little bit faster because you can cover your cost and, and your profit margin by having multiple units rented, have a little bit maybe cheaper price and get attract more applicants higher quality applicants to rent your property right um and that's where you're going to get your real bank for the buck right now okay. interesting so when people some people always say when they you know the market's too crazy i want to rent again what do you give them like, like we had a smirk but it's people are I, I think to rent if you could if you could afford four grand a month in rent yeah how can you not afford to buy a house yeah. You know, like I know you may, and, and if you have good credit, because I find renting, the process of renting a lot more rigorous mm -hmm. than the process of buying a house, just because it's so subjective. You know, what kind of yeah. advice do you give to people? Renting is never, I don't think for most people, I mean, there are going to be that small subset of people where, you know, they really don't want to have any responsibilities of maintenance and anything big, you know, if the, if the washing machine goes, if the landlord's one, they got to replace it. Right. If the fridge goes, some people, there are going to be that small subset of people who don't want those headaches. Right. Right. And, you know, for each their own, but for the larger population, you know, long renting long-term, especially when you're paying those kind of rents, you know, renting a house for $4,000 versus paying, you know, let's say between mortgage and property taxes, $4,500 um, a month. If you could pay that four grand, you could probably pay the, the extra 500 bucks, right? Um, and if you're not sure how to make that work, definitely a mortgage professional can help you with the, figure out your budget, figure out how, how to make that work. But if you're already at that point, you might as well just take the leap because you guaranteed within a couple of years, that 4,000 rent is going to become $4,500 in rent. Because the landlords, as their mortgage rate increases, as they're stuffing, they're going to up their rent. And they're, you know, they're going to do that as often as legally possible because they can. And you don't have much other option because the alternatives are going to be just as, as expensive also. Plus, you already have stability now. Your kids are going to a certain school or their commute for work is a certain distance that you're comfortable with. So you're going to now be locked into staying in that home and your rent is going to appreciate Keep in mind, if you were in a mortgage, even if your mortgage rate did increase, if you locked in for five years, you're good for five years, whereas every year your rent's increasing, it would probably surpass what you would be paying on your mortgage. And your mortgage is actually paying down your debt. So yeah. come, you know, let's just say you lived in a pro you rented a property for 10 years versus owning a property for 10 years, you'll probably f find that you're better off financially, right? Not even looking at equity, but just at where your cash flow is. Because you're, you, if you locked in your, your mortgage rate twice versus your escalating rent rates, you're better off financially and cash flow wise. Yeah. No, 100% right. So if people have that fear, then are you advising them before they even go down that path of, you know, going through the process of renting, explore the possibility of if they can afford to have good credit? Because again, if you're renting, you typically have to have good credit, mm -hmm. you have to have a good job. You, are, you have to have the income to support that rent yeah. to explore mine. Exactly. Like if there's nothing wrong in exploring all your options before you make a decision. And that's like blank clause for life, right? For every aspect of your life, explore all options before you make a decision. No difference when, when, when with your housing needs, right? See if you can qualify. Again, what people do have to get out of their mind though is don't, adjust your expectations you may not be buying your dream home you are buying a stepping stone to your dream home and this is not going to be the 
live in this home for the rest of my life, more than likely. You're going to buy a home. You're going to live in there. It's going to, you're going to build some equity. And then you're eventually probably going to sell that home and step into the next home, which may or may not be your dream home. But eventually, you keep doing those steps. You'll get to that dream home. And potentially, that dream home idea you have in your head might evolve and change where what you did want, that you know six-bedroom, three-car garage mansion might end up being the two-bedroom bungalow, bungalow with a lot of land, a little bit more rural, right? People's needs and, and tastes change. So don't worry about, hey, this is my dream home today and I can't get it. Just get into the market and build to that, right? Exactly. You got to crawl before you walk, right? So same thing. Exactly. 100%. Exactly. No, that's good advice. That's no, great we, advice. We appreciate it. Always, guys. Again, thank you, Sadiq, from Approved Financial Services. How can someone get a hold of you? So you can reach me at 905-391-9979. You can email me, Sadiq at approvedfinancial.ca. Uh, check, you can check me out on social media at Sadiq Boudou, uh, Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn, and also on our website at www.approvedfinancial.ca. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate you. All right. Next month. Yes, sir. Thank you.